welcome to edupediaworld.com this is somja jenayar your online biology tutor the chapter is biotechnology principles and processes in the last video we have discussed about different tools in the field of biotechnology in this video we are going to discuss about different processes which is in the field of biotechnology cobitin host for transformation with recombinant dna this is another key tool using in the field of biotechnology we have already discussed about transformation in the other video transformation is the process by which a recombinant dna is transferred into the host cell since dna is a hydrophilic molecule cannot pass through the cell membrane in order to force the bacteria to take up the plasmid the bacteria cells must first be made competent to take up the dna this is done by treating them with a specific concentration of a divalent cation such as calcium which increases the efficiency with which dna enters the bacterium through pores in its cell wall recombinant dna can then be forced into such cells by incubating the cells with recombinant dna on ice followed by placing them briefly at 42 degrees celsius and this process is called heat shock and then putting them back on ice this enables the bacteria to take up the recombinant dna this is not the only way to introduce alien dna into the host cells there are many different methods for the purpose of transformation in the method known as micro injection recombinant dna is directly injected into the nucleus of an animal cell in another method suitable for plants cells are bombarded with high velocity micro particles of the gold or tungsten which is coated with dna in a method known as biolistics or gene gun and the last method uses disarmed pathogen vectors which when allowed to infect the cell transfer the recombinant dna into the host cell now that we have learned about the tools for constructing recombinant dna let us discuss the various processes which facilitating recombinant dna technology the processes of recombinant dna technology recombinant dna technology involves several steps in specific sequence such as isolation of dna fragmentation of dna by restriction endonucleases isolation of a desired dna fragment ligation of the dna fragment into a vector transferring the recombinant dna into the host cell culturing the host cell in a medium at large scale and extraction of desired product let us examine each of these steps in some details first isolation of genetic material or dna in majority of organisms deoxyribonucleic acid or dna is the genetic material in order to cut the dna with restriction enzymes it needs to be in the pure form which is free from other macromolecules since the dna is enclosed within the membranes we have to break the cell open to release the dna along with other macromolecules such as rna proteins polysaccharides and also lipids this can be achieved by treating the bacterial cells or plants or animal tissues with enzymes such as lysozyme which is from bacteria cellulase which is from plant cells chitinase which is from the fungus you know that genes are located on the long molecules of dna intertwined with the proteins such as histones the rna can be removed by the treatment with ribonuclease whereas protein can be removed by the treatment treatment with proteases other molecules can be removed by appropriate treatments and purified dna ultimately precipitates out after the addition of chilled ethanol this can be seen as the collection of fine threads in the suspension this is the diagrammatic representation of dna extraction here you can see the cells are lysed using detergents that disturb the plasma membrane then the cell contents are treated with proteases to destroy protein and rnases to destroy rna then the cell debris is pelleted in a centrifuge the supernatant that is liquid containing the dna is transferred to a clean tube 
and the DNA is then precipitated with ethanol. It forms viscous strands that can be spooled on the glass road. Cutting of DNA at specific locations. Restriction enzyme digestions are performed by incubating purified DNA molecule with the restriction enzyme at optimal conditions for the specific enzyme. Agarose gel electrophoresis is employed to check the progression of the restriction enzyme digestion. DNA is a negatively charged molecule, hence it moves towards the positive electrode, that is the anode. The process is repeated with the vector DNA also. The joining of DNA involves several processes. After having cut the source DNA as well as the vector DNA with a specific restriction and say, the cutout that the gene of interest from the source DNA and the cut vector with the space are mixed and ligase is added. This result in the preparation of a recombinant DNA. Amplification of gene of interest using PCR. PCR stands for polymerase chain reaction. In this reaction, multiple copies of the gene or DNA of the interest is synthesized in vitro using two sets of primers. Small chemically synthesized oligonucleotides that are complementary to the regions of the DNA and the enzyme DNA polymerase. The enzyme extends the primers using the nucleotides provided in the reaction and the genomic DNA as template. If the process of replication of DNA is repeated many times, the segment of DNA can be amplified to approximately billion times, that is, 1 billion copies are made. Such repeated amplifications is achieved by the use of thermostable DNA polymerase which is isolated from a bacterium called Thermus aquaticus, which remains active during high temperature induced denaturation of double-stranded DNA. The amplified DNA fragment, if desired, can now be used to ligate with a vector for further cloning. This is the diagrammatic representation of the polymerase chain reaction. Here you can see each cycle has three steps. The first step is the denaturation phase. In that phase, the both the strands of the DNA is separated. The second phase is the primer annealing phase. Here, the primer will go and anneal to the template DNA. And the third phase is the extension of primers and the primer is then extended by help of DNA polymerase and other deoxynucleotides. Insertion of recombinant DNA into the host cell or organism. There are several methods of introducing the ligated DNA into the recipient cells. Recipient cells, after making them competent to receive, take up DNA present in its surrounding. So, if a recombinant DNA bearing gene of interest for, to an antibiotic, example ampicillin, is transferred to E. coli cells, the host cell became transformed into ampicillin resistant cell. If it spread the transformed cells on agar plate containing ampicillin, only the transformants will grow. Untransformed recipient cells will die. Since due to the ampicillin resistant gene, one is able to select a transformed cell in the presence of ampicillin. The ampicillin resistant gene in this case is called a selectable marker. Obtaining the foreign gene product. When you insert a piece of alien DNA into a cloning vector and transfer it into a bacteria, plant or animal cell, the alien DNA gets multiplied. In almost all recombinant technologies, the ultimate aim is to produce a desirable protein. Hence, there is a need for the recombinant DNA to be expressed. The foreign gene gets expressed under appropriate conditions. Large scale production of the desired product. After having cloned the gene of interest, and having optimized the condition to induce the expression of the target protein, one has to consider producing it on large scale. If any protein encoding G is expressed in a heterologous host, it is called a recombinant protein. The cells harboring cloned genes of interest may be grown on a small scale in the laboratory. The cultures may be used for extracting the desired protein and then purifying it by using different separation techniques. The cells can also be multiplied in a continuous culture system, wherein the used medium is drained out from one side, while the fresh medium 
is added from the other side to maintain the cells in their physiologically most active log or exponential phase. This type of culturing method produces a larger biomass which is leading to a higher yield of desired proteins. Bioreactors Small volume cultures cannot yield appreciable quantities of product. To produce it in large quantities, the development of bioreactors where large volumes that is 100 to 1000 liters of culture can be processed was required. Thus, bioreactors can be thought of as vessels in which raw materials are biologically converted into specific products, individual enzymes, etc. using microbial plant, animal or human cells. A bioreactor provides the optimal conditions for achieving the desired products by providing optimum growth conditions like temperature, pH, substrate, salts, vitamins, oxygen. The most commonly used bioreactors are of stirring type. Stirred tank reactors. A stirred tank reactor is usually cylindrical or with a curved base to facilitate the mixing of the reactor contents. The stirrer facilitates even mixing and oxygen availability throughout the bioreactor. Alternatively, air can be bubbled through the reactor. The reactor has an agitator system, an oxygen delivery system, and a foam control system, a temperature control system, pH control system, and sampling ports so that the small volumes of the culture can be withdrawn periodically. This is the diagrammatic representation of the bioreactors. The first one is a simple stir tank bioreactor and the second one is a spatched stir tank bioreactor through which sterile air bubbles are spatched. If you look at the figure closely, you will see that the bioreactors has an agitator system, an oxygen delivery system, foam control system, temperature control system, pH control system and sampling ports. Downstream processing. After completion of biosynthetic stage, the product has to be subjected through a series of processes before it is ready for marketing as a finished product. The processes include separation and purification, which are collectively referred to as downstream processing. The product has to be formulated with suitable preservatives. Each formulation has to undergo through clinical trials as in case of drugs. Strict quality control testing for each product is also required. The downstream processing and quality control testing vary from product to product. Thank you. Thus, I am winding up this chapter in this video. In the next video, we will be moving toward the next chapter, Biotechnology and its Applications.